Hello, this is Brian. Today is Sunday, October 17th, 2021. I am in the, the Kern Plateau region of the Southern Sierra Nevada here in Tulare County. I'm at an elevation of about 9,000 feet above sea level and just kind of poking around and checking out these this little meadow over here. Right near Sherman Pass Vista area, and Sherman Pass Road is just up the bank embankment here. So I'm here just checking out to see what kind of interesting plants are growing around here. We're in this little tiny meadow surrounded by scores of red fir, uh, the Critchfeld red fir, Abies Magnifica variety Critchfeldii, and that's a red fir cone. These usually don't drop intact like that. You can see the little bracts on the scales. The bracts on the scales are pretty unique to, well, not completely unique, but pretty important here in the southern Sierras. And uh, conifer experts list them as uh, ver uh, Obvious Magnifica variety Critchfieldii. So, that's one distinguishing factor. Of course, uh, they're also, far northern California, they got... Uh, red firs that have the bracts too, but those might be variety Shastensis up there. Or, obvious Shastensis as a hybrid between noble fir and red fir. So here we are, just beautiful little meadow. Probably moist here during the springtime. See scores of old wildflowers and spent seed heads. Occasional trees invading the meadow. But, then we got a lot of these old dried stocks here. This is Veratrum californicum, variety californicum. This is corn lily or false hellebore. I believe it's in the Melanthiaceae family. And it can be quite a common fixture in these meadow areas and mid upper elevation mountain areas. Also found here, uh, found here quite a bit in the Sierras. It's also found, uh, I've seen it in Southern California, a couple little spots in the San Gabriel Mountains and especially in the San Bernardino Mountains where there are meadows and everything. But it's a beautiful little meadow. There's a lot of types of wildflowers that I'm not familiar with because I don't really make it up to the Sierras very often. But I see Achelia millifolium, which is the yarrow plant. There's some old dried seed heads. Those plants that you saw, the corn lilies, they're not annuals. They just die back to the rootstock during the frosts of autumn. And in the winter, they're all dried up. And then the roots will re-sprout in the springtime. And I'm not too hip to my willows here in the Sierras. But we got a species of willow. I'm going to have to try to look up to see what, what's vouchered in this area. We've got a lot of willows here. And I'm kind of at a loss to what species they are. But coming here in the summer months is probably beautifully lit up with flowers like you wouldn't believe. These are the old dried seed heads of Achelia millifolium, the common yarrow. And then, one tree that likes to grow along the edge of meadows, Sierra Lodgepole Pine, Pinus contorta subspecies Mariana. Very common in this area. And then some plants in the carrot family. These are plants in the carrot family. Since there's no green tissue, they're all died back to their roots. Not able to tell what species they are. Coming here in the summer would probably be a really good idea, but there are lots of meadows in the Sierra Nevada. This is just a small one. This is just a tiny little thing, but there are a lot of big and expansive meadows here too in the Sierras. We're not that far from bi the big meadow and stuff like that, that area. Not super far, a few miles from Sherman Pass. And like I said, my Sherman Pass is just up that way. I just felt like coming over to this little, cute little meadow, just checking it out. These magnificent Christophel red firs here are just amazing, amazingly beautiful trees here. Beautiful area. Definitely an area to come out and visit. And then surrounding the meadow is a nearly monotypic stand of that red fir I was telling you about. Wow, there seems to be some well, there's a large lodgepole pine over here, too. Wow, there's a big lodgepole pine right over here. Actually, a 
little bit, actually a couple little spots of snow on the ground. Must have already got his first snow of the season. A little bit of snow on the ground. But yeah, that yeah, right there. So between these two little red firs is a magnificent lodgepole pine. Magnificent tree. So yeah, I just had to come over here and check this out. My friend's in another area checking out some stuff over there too. And it's incredible what kind of neat stuff is around here. Coming here in the summer would definitely be a good idea. Gorgeous over here. A little red fur seedling right there. A little tiny red fur seedling. These little cones, these belong to the Sierra Lodgepole Pine. There's quite a large specimen here. Not extremely large. You're probably seeing a lot of these on my hikes in the San Gabriel Mountains and San Bernardino Mountains. But here's a magnificent Lodgepole Pine. Magnificent tree. And they got that flaky bark. And then, really larger, older trunks, actually the flakes turn into more like uh, squarish plates when the uh, lodgepole pines become really mature. A lot of times they're flaky. They're kind of flaky when they're younger. But eventually, they can even break out into uh, small plates at the very base. So they have some magnificent lodgepole pines over here too. There's some of the larger ones I've seen. They do get quite large here in the Sierra Nevada. The record lodgepole pine for the largest size is actually in the San Bernardino Mountains, San Bernardino National Forest, east of LA. And that one's 110 feet tall with a trunk three times as, at least three times as wide as this. It's a huge trunk. I've seen the tree before. Before I started filming my, my hikes, It's an easy hike to get to it, too. Bumpy dirt road, but I've made it in a car before, so if you're careful, you can make it. Look at that. But yeah, the lodgepole pines over there, some of those are the basically the largest uh, lodgepole pines in the world. There might be some lodgepole pines here in the Sierras that are taller, maybe a little bit, um, but when it comes to the whole package, girth, biomass, and all that other fun stuff, the one in the Sierra, I think, is supposed to be the largest in the world. And I think that in includes the entire Pinus contorta complex. You got Pinus contorta contorta, which is the shore pine, which is a smaller tree that grows near the ocean in the Pacific Northwest in Northern California. Then you got Pinus contorta subspecies bolanderi, which is another type of uh, coastal lodgepole pine, which is, again, another short tree, often small and stunted. And then you got Pinus contorta latifolia, which is the Rocky Mountain Lodgepole Pine, not found here in California, but I think it's found in the eastern half of Washington and Oregon, where the western half, I think, is uh, would be uh, Mariana. This, again, this is Pinus contorta Mariana right here. That's the only type we have here in, in California. Latifolia doesn't make it into California. So I think the Champion Lodgepole Pine, I think, is through the whole species, but I could be mistaken. I know it's the largest Mariana, you gotta go to San Bernardino County for that. San Bernardino Mountains in Southern California. But I gotta come up here again during the, like July. The month of July over here is probably spectacular. I gotta imagine it's spectacular. Corn lilies, they get whitish flowers. Then they uh, turn into these little papery seed capsules, which eventually uh, seeds will fall out of them and produce seeds for the next round. And this is actually a monocot. This is not a, a, a eudicot. This is actually a monocot. Like orchids, palms, grass. And they get these three chambered seed capsules. Pretty common with monocots. So, again, you might think it's dead, but it's just dormant. The above ground parts are dormant because the temperatures here probably get probably in the teens at night this time of year. Maybe even colder. And then their roots survive the winter and they'll send up new shoots in the spring. 
There's a lot to see here. Coming here in the summer is probably the, the best time during here during mid-October. Things are dying back. Might be some fall color on some of the willows and stuff, but still regardless, it's a neat place to explore and I highly recommend coming out to the Sherman Pass area. You can access it from the 395 on Nine Mile Canyon Road through Kennedy Meadows, or you can come up from Porterville or Lake Isabella. You go up uh, M99 and then you turn and head east on Sherman Pass Road from there. And you can come up here and it's a little bit of a drive no matter what direction you come from, but trust me, it's worth it. It's beautiful up here. So that'll kind of do it for this little video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really don't get to the Sierras much to film, so when I do, I consider it a heck of an occasion. And I hope you enjoy this video. And, ooh, lupines. I will see you on another video. Thanks for watching.